Welcome to Movies We Love Recapped. Today we will explore a 1980 classic boxing historical drama entitled Raging Bull. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button. It's free, and it really helps the channel. Thanks. Here we go. The film begins in 1964. We see an aging, overweight former fighter, Jake LaMotta, practicing a comedy routine. Flashback to 1941. LaMotta is in a major boxing match against Jimmy Reeves. LaMotta swings powerful punches and sends Reeves to the mat. Not once, but twice. In the last minute of the fight, LaMotta pounds Reeves so hard he's knocked unconscious a final time. But the bell rings on the count of nine. Reeves, being ahead in points, wins the bout by decision. The crowd boos in disgust, and a riot erupts. The scene changes to the Bronx, New York City. We see Jake's brother, Joey LaMotta, discussing a potential shot for the middleweight title with one of his mafia connections, Salvi Bats. He needs help from the mob to move up in the boxing world. Jake is in a depressed mood and tells his little brother to hit him in the face. At first his brother refuses, but then agrees and repeatedly punches Jake harder and harder right in the face. He stops when Jake's cuts start opening. Next, we see a few wise guys show up at the gym to watch Jake and his brother train. Jake is angry because he doesn't want the Mafia involved in his career. They control the fight game, but Jake doesn't want any part of them. He wants to do this on his own. Sometime thereafter, Jake spots a 15-year-old girl named Vicky at a swimming pool in his Bronx neighborhood. He watches as she flirts with the local Mafia guys. He decides to pursue her. Jake attends a local dance in the hopes of meeting and getting to know Vicky. However, Salvi is there also and takes Vicky and her friends out in his car. Later, by the outdoor pool, Joey introduces Vicky to his brother. Jake takes her for a drive and they play miniature golf together. They end up back at his place and he seduces her even though he is already married. The scene changes to 1943 Detroit and we see Jake facing Sugar Ray Robinson. Both men pound each other, but Jake seems to dominate, even knocking Robinson out of the ring. At the end of the fight, Robinson receives his first defeat ever in his career. Jake will soon face Robinson again. But before the fight, Vicky teases Jake. He uses all his willpower to resist her. He even dumps ice water on himself. We see Jake's next fight against Sugar Ray. Again, he sends Ray to the canvas, but this time Robinson is given the victory. In the dressing room, Joey loses it, smashing a chair against the wall in a rage. He's convinced his brother was robbed. Here, the movie continues with flashback scenes of a few more fights that Jake wins. These are all shown as still pictures. We then see Jake and Joey's life progress, shown as color home movies. They both get married and begin raising families. Jump forward to 1947. Joey has gotten Jake a fight with a young, up-and-coming fighter named Tony Gennaro. But Jake doesn't want to fight Gennaro. He wants a shot at the title. The problem is no one will fight Jake LaMotta because he destroys people in the ring. His wife, Vicky, trying to convince him to fight, then makes the mistake of saying Gennaro is a good-looking guy. Jake can't handle it and gets angry at her and begins to obsess about Vicky having feelings for other men. That night, they visit the Copacabana Club, a table of mafioso invite Jake and Vicky over for a drink. Jake is instantly jealous, thinking Vicky has an eye for Salvi. Jake reluctantly accepts the invitation and tells the wise guys he's going to destroy Gennaro. They should bet all their money on Jake winning the fight. Jake's prediction comes true as he brutalizes Gennaro in the ring, knocking him out in a bloody mess. Jake smiles at his wife, knowing she witnessed the destruction of Gennaro. As Joey discusses the victory with journalists at the Copacabana, he is distracted by seeing Vicky approach a table with Salvi and his crew. Joey angrily scolds Vicky, who says she has given up on Jake. He pays her no attention anymore. Joey viciously attacks Salvi in the club. The fight spills out onto the street and ends with Joey repeatedly slamming Salvi with a car door. Mob boss Como later orders them to shake hands and apologize. He then tells Joey that if Jake wants a shot at the title fight, he will have to work with the mob. This includes taking a dive at his next fight. Jake finally, reluctantly agrees. His next fight is against Billy Fox. It's painfully obvious during the fight that Jake is intentionally trying to lose. He stands there allowing Fox to pummel him. After the fight, he cries in the locker room. 
being so humiliated. Shortly after, Jake is suspended from the board on suspicion of throwing the fight. It's front page news. He's reinstated, and two years later, in 1949, he finally gets his shot at Marcel Serdan for the middleweight championship of the world. Jake's sick jealousy grows, and when Tommy Como, the mob boss, visits him before the fight and greets Vicky with a kiss, Jake accuses her of having feelings for Como. He smacks her and screams at his brother to shut up. Jake makes easy work of Sir Dan, and by the 10th round, the champ has had enough and capitulates his title, unable to continue the fight. Jake is now the middleweight champion of the world. A year later in 1950, Jake asks Joey if he attacked Salvi at the Copacabana because of Vicky. Jake then asks if Joey had an affair with her. Joey refuses to answer, calls Jake a sick creep, and leaves. Jake then confronts Vicky about the affair, and when she hides from him in the bathroom, he breaks down the door, prompting her to sarcastically state that she had sex with the entire neighborhood, including his brother, Salvi, and Tommy Como. Jake angrily marches to Joey's house and assaults Joey in front of Joey's wife, Lenora, and their children. It finally ends when he punches Vicky in the jaw, knocking her unconscious. Of course, once again, Vicky forgives him. After a grueling 15-round bout against Frenchman Laurent Dautil, Jake, in the last few seconds of the match, unleashes huge punishment and knocks his opponent out, retaining his world champion title. But now estranged from his brother Joey, Jake's career begins to decline slowly. He next fights Sugar Ray again in 1951. By the end of the fight, Jake is so tired, he allows Ray to pound him without mercy. But he doesn't go down. Soon, he is sprayed with his own blood from head to toe. Finally, the ref stops the fight and declares Sugar Ray the new middleweight champ. Jake tells Ray, You never got me down, Ray. I never went down. By 1956, Jake and his family have moved to Miami. He has opened a club and now does MC and stand-up each night. He also flirts with underage girls and allows them to drink in his club. After being in the club all night, Vicky is waiting for him out front. She tells him she's getting a divorce and full custody of the children. If he comes near her or the children, she will call the police. Shortly after this, the police arrive to investigate. Turns out the girls he was allowing to drink in his club were only 14 years old. We then see two deputies violently throw him into the lockup. He melts down in despair crying and pounding the walls with his head and bare knuckles. Jump ahead to 1958. Jake is back in New York City and doing MC work again. Outside a club, he sees his brother Joey walking. Jake tries to catch up to him, but Joey seems to want little to do with Jake. He reluctantly allows Jake to hug him. Finally, as the movie comes to a close, we see that Jake is headlining at a New York City lounge. He will be performing famous works, including On the Waterfront. He practices his lines in the dressing room before going out on stage. He shadow boxes and chants to himself, I'm the boss, over and over again. The film ends here. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this recap. See you next time.